Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about zeros and intercepts of rational functions. Remember that in a rational function, we always have a restriction that the denominator should not be equal to zero, since the division by zero is undefined. Therefore, 5 over 0, 92 over 0, and negative 10 over 0 are all undefined. On the other hand, if the numerator is 0, then the rational expression will be 0, like 0 over 5, 0 over 92, and negative 0 over 10. Therefore, we define 0 of rational function as a value that will make the numerator equal to 0 without making the denominator equal to 0, meaning 0 or zeros of rational function our value or values of x that will make the numerator equal to zero, but it will not make the denominator equal to zero. These are the steps in finding the zeros of rational functions. First, if possible, factor the numerator and the denominator. Second, identify the restrictions of the denominator values that will make the denominator equal to zero. Third, identify the values that will make the numerator equal to zero. And finally, determine the zero or zeros of the rational function. Let us have an example. Find the zeros or zero of the rational function below. We have f of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 6 all over x squared minus 4. First, let us factor the numerator and the denominator. When we factor the numerator and the denominator, we will have x plus 2 times x minus 3 to be the factors of x squared plus 5x plus 6 and for the denominator, the factors of x squared minus 4 are x plus 2 times x minus 2. Next, identify the restrictions of the denominator. So once again, the restrictions of the denominators are the values of x that will make the denominator equal to 0. So to do that, we simply equate the two factors by 0. So x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. So when we solve for the value of x, here we have x equals negative 2, and here we have x equals 2. Therefore, from here, we can say that x cannot be equal to negative 2 and 2, since they will make the denominator equal to 0. If the denominator becomes zero, then the whole rational function will be undefined. On the other hand, let us determine the values of x that will make the numerator equal to zero. So, what are we going to do is to equate the factors of the numerator to zero. So, we will have x plus 2 equals zero and x minus 3 equals zero. So next, let us solve for the values of x. So x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to positive 3. So from here, we can see that the values that will make the numerator equal to 0 are negative 2 and positive 3. Remember, the definition of 0 of a rational function are the values of x that will make the numerator equal to 0. However, if you will look at the value x equals negative 2, this value is also a restriction. For that case, this value is not a 0 of the rational function. Therefore, the 0 of the given rational function is x equals 3. Let us have another example. Find the zero or zeros of the rational function below. 
f of x equals x squared minus 10x plus 25 all over x squared minus 25. Again, we factor first the numerator and the denominator. So we will have for the numerator, the factors of x squared minus 10x plus 25 are x minus 5 and another x minus 5. All over, the factors of x squared minus 25 are x minus 5 times x plus 5. Next, let us determine the restrictions of the denominator. So once again, to determine the restrictions of the denominator, let us equate the two factors of the denominator to 0. So x minus 5 equals 0 and x plus 5 equals 0. So when we solve for the value of x, we have here x equals 5 and here x equals negative 5. Therefore, our restrictions would be x cannot be equal to negative 5 and positive 5 because these values will make our denominator 0 and will make the entire rational function undefined. Also, determine the values of x that will make the numerator equal to 0. So to do that, let us equate the factors of the numerator to 0. So we will have x minus 5 equals 0 and then x minus 5 equals 0. So here, when we solve for the value of x, we have x equals 5. And also, on the other side, we have x equals 5. Since they are the same, we can simply write here x equals 5. Notice that x equals 5 as the 0 of the numerator is also a restriction at the denominator. So, since it is also a restriction, we cannot consider x equals 5 as a zero of the rational function. Therefore, the rational function has no zero. Let us go to the intercepts of rational functions. When we say intercepts, these are the x and y coordinates of the points at which a graph crosses the x-axis or the y-axis respectively. Therefore, we have two intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The x-intercept is the x-coordinate of the point where the graph crosses the x-axis, while the y-intercept is the y-coordinate of the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. These are the steps in finding the x- and y-intercepts of the rational function. First, to find the x-intercept, substitute 0 for y and solve for x. And to find y-intercept, substitute 0 for x and solve for y. Let us take this example. Find the intercepts of the rational function below. f of x equals x plus 10 over x plus 2. To find the x-intercept, we need to set y equal 0. So what we need to do is to substitute 0 to our f of x because remember that f of x is equal to y. Hence, we will have 0 equals x plus 10 over x plus 2. Remember that since this is 0, when we cross multiply 0 times x plus 2, that will still be 0. So we will have 0 equals x plus 10. To solve for the value of x, isolate the constant to the left side of our equation. So we're going to have x equals negative 10. Therefore, the x-intercept of the rational function is negative 10. For the y-intercept, we need to set the value of x be equal to 0. So, we will have y equals 0 plus 10 all over 0 plus 2. So when we simplify, 
we will have 0 plus 10 will give us 10 over 0 plus 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Therefore, the y-intercept of our given is 5. Here is another example. Find the intercepts of the rational function below. f of x equals x squared plus 7x plus 10 all over x squared minus 5. Once again, to solve for the x-intercept, we need to set y to 0. So we will have 0 equals x squared plus 7x plus 10 all over x squared minus 5. Once again, when we do cross multiplication, we will have x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Since this is a quadratic equation, we need to factor the quadratic equation. The factors of x squared plus 7x plus 10 are x plus 2 times x plus 5. Next, let us equate both factors by 0. x plus 2 equals 0 and x plus 5 equals 0. Solve for the value of x. Here, this will give us x equals negative 2. And here, this will give us x equals negative 5. Therefore, we have here two x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are negative 2 and negative 5. On the other hand, to solve for the y-intercept, we need to set x to 0. So we will have y equals 0 squared plus 7 times 0 plus 10 all over 0 squared minus 5. Next, let us simplify the numerator and the denominator. 0 squared is equal to 0 plus 7 times 0 is also 0. So 0 plus 0 is 0 plus 10 that will give us 10 all over 0 squared is 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Simplify 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. Therefore, the y-intercept is negative 2. Lastly, find the intercepts of the rational function below f of x equals x squared plus 16 all over x squared minus 4. Once again, to solve for the x-intercept, set y be equal to 0. So we will have 0 equals x squared plus 16 all over x squared minus 4. So when we do cross multiplication here, it will give us x squared plus 16 equals 0. To solve for the value of x, isolate the constant to the right side, giving us with x squared equals negative 16. And to solve for the value of x, get the square root of both sides. However, notice that we need to evaluate here is square root of negative 16. And remember that a negative number does not have any real square root. Therefore, this function does not have x-intercept. How about the y-intercept? To solve for the y-intercept, set x be equal to 0. So we will have y equals 0 squared plus 16 all over 0 squared minus 4. So we will have y equals 0 squared is 0 plus 16, it will give us 16. All over, 0 squared is 0, minus 4 is negative 4. Divide 16 by negative 4, it will give us negative 4. So therefore, the y-intercept is negative 4.
I hope that you have understood the lesson. And for the next video, we will discuss about the inverse functions. Thank you and see you on our next discussion. Thank you.